For this function, we're going to list all the transformations, show the changes occurring throughout a series of t-charts, and then graph your final t-chart. So in other words, instead of on one graph showing graphing the main curve, then graphing the curve after it's moved left or moved up, and then flipped, we're going to wait and do everything in our t-charts like we've been done in the past, and then we're just going to graph that final last t-chart, and that's all we're going to do. Okay, so let's list out our transformations. All this, obviously we're starting with cosine x and go to inside the function to decide what's going to happen first. There's nothing added or subtracted to x, so there's no shifting. There's The next thing we want to look for is a negative sign attached to x, and there's not. So last but not least is that number attached to x. And when I want to look at what number is it, is it 2 or is it 1 half, just pull away the x variable. So if you take like you know, x over 2, and you pull this away, what's left over really is a 1 half, okay? So that tells us that we're going, we actually have a, this time, it's going to be a horizontal stretch. And you're saying stretch, why? Is because everything that's inside, we do opposite. And so the reciprocal of 1 half is actually 2. So we're going to multiply the x values by 2. Okay, so that takes care of inside the function. Now let's go to the outside of the function. In the outside, we're going to first kind of draw a line because I just draw a line saying, okay, everything above this line affects the x values, everything below affects the y's. Nothing major, but first thing we're going to do is that one half out front. So we're going to take that as is. So it's going to be a vertical shrink, if you want to say. And we're going to multiply the x values as is, so by one half. And I said the x values. Let me take two seconds and slow down here. It's actually going to be the y values, right? Because the vertical axis is your y axis, so it's got to be the y values. And number three, we're going that negative sign out front tells us we're going to reflect over the x axis. It's vertical movement, so we're going to go from above the x-axis to below, or below to above. And then number four, we're going to shift, looks like, up one. So we're going to add one to the y-values. Okay, so let's look at a series of t-charts. I'm going to draw my x's and y's. And if you want to, for your t-chart, if you just want to use what I used in your notes before, that is totally fine. So what I might do is just kind of graph it for one positive rotation. So I'll probably start at 0, and then I'll go pi over 4, pi over 2, let's see, 3 pi over 4, pi, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and I'm running out of room. And last one, at least, we'll put 2 pi, and we'll see if I can get that in there, and then we'll fix this later. All right, so the x value, because we're graphing our basic function, which is y equals cosine of x, okay? So our x value at 0 radians, or 0 degrees, is 1. My x value at pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, which is roughly 0.7. My x value at pi over 2 is 0. At 3 pi over 4, it's going to be negative 0.7. At pi, it's negative 1. 5 pi over 4, it's a negative 0.7. At 3 pi over 2, we're down at 0. 7 pi over 4 is a 0 0.7, and back to 2 pi, which is a 1. Okay, so if we go through our list of our transformations, let's see how many of these we can kind of do at one time. And in our list, we have the first thing as being we want to multiply the x values by 2. So let's multiply those by 2. That'll take care of that first one. The second one says we want to multiply our y values by half. And then we want to switch the sign, so why don't we just go ahead and multiply by negative one half, and that'll take care of steps two and steps three. So drawing a new t-chart, knowing this information, I'm going to give myself a little more height over here, so I don't run into my words for the next one. Okay, so all those x values times two. Well, zero times two is zero. Pi over four times two would be pi over two. Pi over two times two is pi. Which remember, it's 2 pi over 2, which would reduce. 3 pi over 4 would go to 3 pi over 2. 
pi times 2 is 2 pi. 5 pi over 4 times 2 would be 5 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 times 2 is 3 pi. Then 7 pi over 2, and then 4 pi. On the y values, we're going to multiply everything by negative 1 half. So 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half. A half, a negative 1 half of 0.7 Looks like it's going to be a negative 0.35. A half of 70 cents is 35 cents. A half of 0 is 0. And then negative points, oh, we're going to go positive 0.35 this time. So we've got to make sure we're multiplying by a negative 1 half. And then positive 1 half right here. Positive 0.35. 0. A negative 0.35. And negative, or 1 times negative 1 half is negative one half. Okay? And last but not least, we have our final transformation, which says all we have to do is add one. So add one to all those y values. It looks easier said than done, but I bet you we can do it. And then this will give us our final t-chart. So all we're going to be graphing is this last t-chart. That's our, our big thing. We're done with all the x values, so let's just write those as is. The only thing we have left to do is to add to our y values is add 1. So we're going to get a half and then 0 0.65 and 1. And we'll get 1.35. A half plus 1, we can say 1 and a half, or we, if you want to say 3 halves, it's fine. We're just going to be graphing, so we kind of want it as a mixed fraction. We'll get 1.35, 1, 0 0.65, and 1 half. Okay, so what we got to do from here is just use that last t-chart that I arrowed right here, and we're going to use that to graph, and then we can call this problem done. So drawing ourselves our x and y axis, I'm going to make it more heavy on the right side because, like I said, I was kind of focusing more on just graphing from 0 to 2 pi as opposed to going into the negative pi over 2, negative 2 pi side of things. And we'll call this one, let's see, we're going to go up to 4 pi. So how about 1, we'll call that 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. And looks like our x, our y values, we'll call this 1 and 2. How about that? So there's negative 1, there's negative 2. And then right there would be the negative pi. Okay. Our first point is 0, 1 half. At pi over 2, we're at 0 0.65. We're just a little bit above that. At pi, we're up at 1. At 3 pi over 2, which is 1 and a half pi, we're at 1.35. At 2 pi, we're at 1 and a half. 5 pi over 2, we're at 1.35, so we're coming back down now. At 3 pi, we're at 1. 7 pi over 2, which is 3 and a half pi, so 1, 2, 3 and a half pi. We're at 0 0.65. And at 4 pi, we're at a half. So we're kind of doing, if you kind of get used to the curve, we're doing this. So it's going to be kind of coming, I want to kind of extend this on just a little bit more, if I possibly can. And here, let's look at this point. I know that at positive pi, we're at 1. So I bet you at negative pi, we're also at 1. So we can just help kind of draw a graph to where it goes a little bit beyond just where our window was. Okay, so here's a function, the cosine graph, that has been basically stretched horizontally, so pulled along the x-axis, shrunken along the y-axis, so kind of smashed down, flipped, and then moved up 1. And you have your graph.